up internet my name is Amy Pie Master and welcome back to my YouTube channel so today I'm reviewing another TV show because I watch too many of them today I'm going to be reviewing the Spectrum original Manhunt Deadly Games unfortunately this show as far as I can tell you can only watch if you're a Spectrum customer which I am so I'm sorry if you you're not which I know a lot of people aren't I feel like there's probably other ways to watch it. Just Google it and you can probably find a way to watch it. So this show, I didn't really have any desire to actually watch. I was just downstairs with my family, preparing to take a little nap on the couch. And my dad turned this on and next thing I know I'm sucked into it. So did not get a nap, but did watch a lot of episodes of this show. So like I said, this show is a Spectrum original, which I didn't have any high hopes for because since when do like cable providers make their own TV shows? I didn't know what to expect going into it. Definitely thought it was going to be a show I could fall asleep to. It's not, just FYI. <laughs> so this show is about the true story about the Centennial Park bomber, which was at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. There was a bomb that went off, killed two people, injured a lot more. So this all happened before I was born. So the only thing I knew about going into it was that the wrong guy got kind of convicted in the media while the real bomber kind of went off doing whatever for a while. That's all I knew going into it. Basically what ended up happening was Richard Jewell, who was a security guard at Olympic Park, found a suspicious backpack under a bench and he was a little overzealous, so everybody kind of like shrugged him off when he had like some tip or something because they're like, he's just trying to get his break to become a big league cop. Anyways, he saw this backpack. He went and alerted other officers at the park. They were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. We'll check it out. Turns out it wasn't an actual bomb. So he was right. And so they start clearing out the area. They got as many people as they could out of the area. Unfortunately, not everybody. It was a shrapnel bomb, so it killed two people and injured a lot more. But many people were saved because Richard Jewell sounded the alarm. However, there were some sketchy things about his past that made people believe he was the person that planted the bomb. So the FBI thought he might be our guy. We're looking for this bomber. It might be him. He might be a hero bomber is what they called him. Um, where he planted the bomb then alerted people, not expecting anybody to get hurt, but just to be the hero of the situation. A reporter named Kathy Scr Scruggs wrote an article about him that made him like enemy number one in the country because everybody thought he's guilty. He's the one that did it. There were reporters camped outside of his house. He lived with his mom at the time and she was getting hounded too. However, the whole time while the FBI was watching him, they didn't have enough evidence to convict him. These other bombs are taking place all over the South. The FBI thinks that they got their guy as the bomber. They think that Richard Jewell was definitely the one that set the Centennial Park bomb, but they don't think that he set these other bombs. However, the ATF, who's uh, headquartered in Atlanta, I believe, they think that all the bombs are connected, that whoever set all these new bombs is also the person set it, who set the Centennial Park bomb. They find all the evidence that connects all these bombs together and they're trying to present their case to the FBI and be like, we think you got the wrong guy. I think you need to look into this. The FBI keeps shrugging it off. But there was a bomb that killed a cop in Alabama at an abortion clinic and somebody didn't see who set the bomb, but they saw somebody acting suspicious after the bomb went off. And they followed them, gave the description of the vehicle, the person, to the cops. And basically that led them to this man named Eric Rudolph, who was from Murphy, North Carolina. There were three additional bombs after the Centennial Park one. The ATF thought Eric Rudolph was the one that set all four of them. The FBI thought that he's only set the additional three. So they followed this guy back to North Carolina after he set the bomb in Alabama. They find out he lives in kind of a very densely wooded area of North Carolina, like half a million acres of land in this forest. 
Uh, he was an ex-army guy trained in, guess what, explosives and also evading people. So he knows how to hide. Once he figures out, oh crap, they're on to me, he runs and hides uh, in all this very densely populated wood area. And he's from there, so he knows the area very well. The FBI does not. However, this town that he is from is very, I don't know how to put it. They're very uh, anti-government. Basically, there's a sheriff, like there is of any town. He doesn't have that much power though. It's mainly their militia group that they have there controls everything. It's just a bunch of guys with guns saying that they're protecting everybody, but trying to keep the government out of their town. They think that Rudolph was justified since he bombed, he bombed two abortion clinics. So they thought he's justified in doing that because it's wrong. So whatever, the FBI doesn't have a right to take him. We're going to help him escape. Rudolph is an exceptional mastermind at manipulation. He's so good at manipulating people. He comes across in the forest one day, a member of the militia group and he talks to them and you know, says like, oh yeah, I was doing it from the army of God. So that of course hooks them in and think, oh, he's a good guy. He was doing God's work, bombing these clinics. So that gets the militia on his side. They're trying to protect him. The FBI is set up camp in this town. They're trying to find him. The militia kind of starts a war with the FBI, trying to keep them away from Eric Rudolph. Eventually, the ATF guys finally get through to the FBI and they convince them, look, here's all the evidence that Eric Rudolph was the one that set the Centennial Park bomb, not Richard Jewell. The militia had several family members that were at the Olympics. There were women and children there. There were little babies at the Olympics and he was willing to kill everybody. So that now got the militia on the FBI side. And so they helped track down Eric Rudolph and eventually he gets found, captured, arrested, and now he's rotting in a jail cell. <laughs> That's kind of how the whole story unfolded. All of that stuff that I just said you can find in old news articles. Um, he didn't get arrested until 2003. So he hid in these woods for like five years. It was insane. I don't know how he did that, but so the show goes over all of that and some more little details of the story. The first half of the season mainly focuses on Richard Jewell and why he could be guilty and why he says that he's not. The second half starts to focus more on Eric Rudolph um, because he was the actual guy. It was a good show. I didn't know anything about this story other than like what I said that the wrong guy got convicted while the other guy like ran free basically. That's all I knew about the Olympic Park bombing. I was like could not look away from this show because I was learning so much and it was so interesting. Just the people that they encountered and how Rudolph was able to manipulate this whole town to get them on his side. Like that blew my mind. This show was done very well. I was very shocked. Um, definitely if you have Spectrum, I suggest watching it. Um, I would probably rate it four stars just because there were some, like it was good, but it wasn't the best that I've ever seen. I don't know. There were some points where they focused on things that I didn't think were important to the story. Maybe they were and I just didn't. It just went over my head, but who knows. And some parts of it I think that they dragged out too much just to like extra drama. But other than that, it was a good show. The acting was done very well. And I might now, I know that there was a movie about Richard Jewell that got released at the end of 2019. Um, I didn't go see it, but I might watch it now and compare the stories and see how similar or not similar that they are. And honestly, guys, I am running out of things to watch because there's so many things to watch, but I don't know what to watch. So if there's any movies or TV shows that you want me to watch and review on here, let me know, please. When I started this channel, I thought originally it was going to be mainly movie reviews. However, three days after I started this channel, theaters got shut down. So that makes it a little bit harder to review new movies, but we're trying y'all. And 
today is my official first month on YouTube. So thank you to everybody that's been watching and subscribing and liking the videos and commenting. I really appreciate it and I want you all to keep doing that, please. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new around here and have not subscribed to my channel yet, you should definitely do that and then hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Well, that's all I've got for you today, so I guess I'll see you next time. Bye!